Hey everybody, it's Glider Cat. It's time to play. Let's pick up where we left off here on Logistical 3 Earth. We're just learning the game. If you're with me, then I hope you got through episode one. It's going to take a little time for us to get up to speed here, but uh, I think you'll find it's worth it. If this game has at all piqued your interest, then uh, I, think, I think you're going to like it. Let's see. Let's pick up where we left off. Let's see here. Let's start out with our contracts over here. As we board 1000, continue to complete the icons on the map. Okay, and we saw that. We read the hints there. That one's actually done. So let's look at this guy. Super fast trucks. We need to complete four businesses. And we already read all this text, so I'm just going to close that out. So let's go ahead and see if we can't complete some of these uh, towns. So here's one. And I just by hovering over the icon, I can see this needs uh, 0.8 clay. We got a couple ways to do it. I'll click the town and we'll do just like before. I'm going to drag the clay. As soon as I click, I get this menu and I'll drop it and we'll let this guy deliver clay. I'll turn down my local volume here so it doesn't echo. All right, so we solved that. That was good for $400. And the money that we accumulate here, this is going to be used for uh, upgrading the trucks. And then as we do make deliveries, we uh, we do, it does, there is some expense. And we'll see that as we go. Let's see, this guy. Okay, this building is unique, and it's uh, our town is unique. Still says town. And this is... Let's see, this is our depot. This is where we can go and buy additional trucks. So if I want another used one tonner truck, just like the one we got now, it's gonna come with 125,000 miles, I mean kilometers, just like the one we have actually, I think has right around that. Or I can buy the same vehicle new with zero kilometers, excellent condition for $10,000, or I can get a new dump truck, eight tons, so it carries eight times the product for 35000 Or I can get this one ton gizmo multi-nav. I have no idea what that is. We may just try it at some point. It says zero, so we'll have to see. One ton, or no, it says, oh my gosh, look at that. At the very top, there's a price in that pop-up. It says $1 million, one ton, new, gizmo, multi-nav. So I'm not sure what that's about. Maybe we'll see uh, down the road. But apparently there was maybe not enough space to put a million above the icon, but it's there. Anyway, so we'll get to that. I don't think we need more trucks just yet. We have cash. We can get another one. But let's uh, let's keep things simple for now. But just be aware that that car icon that we see here, that vehicle icon, is telling us that that's our depot. And when we want to get new trucks, that's where we got to go to get them. Cool. So I'll close that out. Let's see what other towns we have around here that we need to complete. We've got this uh, thing that actually looks like a library book. Let's click on that and see what that's all about. A house of the cane. Now, again, I don't see a population. So this one, we don't have to worry about completing or the resources being consumed by a population while we supply it. And it needs just 0 0.72 clay. So let's go fill that in. And again, I just clicked on what it needs and drag it to the map and find where the clay is. Drop it down. Our truck will just automatically go there. Pick up the clay and deliver it. Looks like it's going to be one trip for this. All right. And there we go. We got $400 for doing that. I'm just going to dismiss this guy. And while we're here at the house of the cane, we can see that this guy has inputs and outputs in its production. So it is going to produce a sugar cane, and it's got 9.6 sugar cane currently in inventory. It can store up to 25. And if we supply fertilizer, we can supply up to 25 uh, tons of fertilizer. And right now there's zero input inventory, so it doesn't have any to use. And then as it gets this fertilizer, we will, uh, it'll produce more sugar cane that we can pick up. And there's places that are going to need sugar cane. Just like we're delivering the clay now to cities, there'll be cities that require the sugar cane. And we'll come here to get it. So for now, we completed that town. 
Let's look on the map and see what else we have. It looks like maybe they turn yellow. Is that, I don't know if that's yellow. Uh, once we complete them, let's look at this Marine World Museum. Here's another one that's got inputs and outputs. So if we supply this building worms or this town worms, we're going to get fish. And then we'll see that overlay as we utilize this building, as we utilize the materials. I'm not sure if it's a delivering and consuming, taking products from here and bringing inputs in, or if it's just the consuming. But we will actually get credit for that. And then we can upgrade this building, upgrade this town. And so what's it mean to upgrade the town? Well, we'll see when we do it, but I believe, and I could be mistaken, but I believe what's going to happen is as we upgrade the towns, this inventory size is going to get bigger. So we won't have to wait for uh, the fish in this case to be produced. If we have say an inventory of a thousand instead of 20. We can keep supplying worms, build up an inventory here of a thousand fish. And then when we go to satisfy some other town that needs fish and it needs a whole bunch, needs way more than 20, it needs, you know, 500 fish. We don't have to wait for the, this fishing town to produce the fish. It may have it already in its output inventory and we can grab it quick. And we'll see that later, but that's just kind of, you know, we'll go over these things multiple times, but, uh, for now, we're just looking to complete some of these towns on the map. And to complete the town, all we got to do is drag the resource that it wants and find it on the map and then just let up and our truck will go get it. And so this guy's going to take two turns. And you can see as we get far away from the resource that, that, that they need, it takes a little bit of time to... Uh, to satisfy or to deliver the resources that they need. So that was two trips. It wasn't that this, um, in perspective of the uh, the maps and the towns that we're going to see, this is a pretty short distance. And we can see it actually took a little bit of time and we didn't have to deliver much. So fortunately, again, this is a place that doesn't have a population. So they're not consuming the resources. And as we go, we'll, we'll see, we'll see more of this, but let's just keep moving along here. And we got a new contract popped up. It says reward 1000 to explore more of the map. You will need to fix some of the roads, click on the road and drag the resource to an industry on the map. So, and the, the task is here in blue. It says repair the road. So what are they talking about? Well, because I have this contract selected, here's another aspect of the GUI we're going to cover. I'm just going to actually come down here and get rid of that. So we're not distracted. But because I have this contract selected, that's why that blue arrow is here. I don't know if you can see that little blue arrow. It's pointing at what I need to go do. Sometimes the contracts, let's see, if I click on these old ones, yeah, if I click on one that we've already completed, you can see that blue arrow has gone away. But if I click on the contract, whichever one is active, it's going to try and give me some hints about where I need to be looking. And sometimes that those arrows will be somewhere you can't reach. And it's just letting you know, you need to go, you know, way up here. But in this case, for this contract, what we got to do is fix this road. And so what does that mean? So we've got these icons on the map for different towns and different uh, production facilities, right? Uh, this guy that we're at right now produces fish and this one produces sugar cane and it looks like everything that's got a book icon or what I'm calling a book icon, is going to have a product for us to deliver. That's what my guess is. Let's see. Does this guy? Nope. I think I'm wrong on that. So some icons are towns. Then we've got these icons. We can see our roadmap. And then we see this dotted line, which I'm guessing is red. I'm colorblind, so I can't tell you what color that is, but I'm guessing that's a red dotted line. And on either side of the red dotted line, it says roadworks. If I click that, it comes up kind of like a town. It says roadworks, Martinique, North America roadworks. Okay. It's just saying that this site needs clay. And sometimes this will be gravel. It may be sand. It may be cement bricks. There'll be all kinds of different products, but right now, early on, they're just you know, kind of keeping things simple for us. So we need to deliver clay here. And once we do, this section of the road will open up. And if we look, we've got another section of road down here that's blocked, but I don't see a little icon showing, telling me 
what kind of product, what, what's needed here. And in fact, I can't even click over here, I don't think. Let's see. I click on a town and then I click here. It's not really telling, it's, I don't know if that's, let's see, what would Merck's Martinique? This is saying I need sand. So if I go, I'm just gonna take my truck. I'm gonna show you how to move the truck when, you, when you're not uh, delivering products. So if I hover over where the truck is, and this is a little, a little sensitive, there might be an easier way of doing it. Maybe I can just, can I just grab this guy? So that's another way of doing it. If I go to my vehicle list and I just click on the truck and drag, I can, I can uh, place it anywhere I want him to go, as long as it's a kind of a destination and you'll know it'll kind of snap in, then he'll go there. So that's one way to do it. Click on the truck in your vehicle list. Another way is if you hover over where the truck is, and he's usually gonna be at a destination like a town. So the town will pop in first. And then depending on where I move the mouse, eventually the truck is gonna get a little bit bigger like that. Now I can click the truck and select it. So just for curiosity's sake, let's go over to this one that doesn't have an icon and see what happens when we drive over there. Okay, nothing. You saw a little bit of, I'm not sure what this says, discovered. Okay, discovered industry, orange orchard. Okay, this is saying we discovered something just by taking this route. And now if I click this, it's saying we need sand. And I'm not sure why the icon isn't showing up. Could be that we haven't discovered a place where sand is being produced and that's why it's just not even showing us that it's an option to go satisfy. So, but I'm kind of surprised it's not showing an icon just like this guy's with the clay. So we'll get back to that. For now, we know we can go satisfy this, right? So we'll click on that location. It needs clay. And we'll do the same thing we've been doing. We'll just click on clay and go fetch it. So now that truck's going to deliver the clay. And we'll see once it delivers it, this road will open up and we can get to these other locations. And just like some of the other towns without population, there's no... You know, there's no consuming, so you can kind of supply these at your leisure. You don't have to worry about uh, having to race against the clock here. So here, if we look down here, it says road works complete. The road's open. And we didn't get it. I don't think we got any money for doing that, but it did open up the map. And now we can go explore further on in. And we see there's another road that's going to need to be completed. We're going to need to leave, deliver some type of resource here to complete this section of road. So we skipped one little town here. Let's go ahead and do this one. It needs 3.2 clay. So we'll just go do the same thing here. We'll drag it down. And you'll see these little numbers come floating up from the truck. So it's showing the expense and it's showing the profit as we deliver the goods. So there we're there is our bonus, our 1600 we saw just flash up. That's for completing that town. So we'll just dismiss that. We kind of know what's going on there. So this whole area looks fairly explored. And it's a super simple area of the map. Trust me, they get more busy than this. All right, let's see. So now the fixed roads thing is showing us an arrow pointing at the road that we completed, but we're done with that one. So let's look, we've got two more contracts that popped up here. First one is industries. It says most industries require inputs to produce output. Yeah, and we saw that, right? We saw a couple of towns like that. The fishing place required worms and I think the sugarcane place may have required fertilizer. Okay, drag the input of the industry on the town pop-up onto an industry on the map to create a truck route and fill the industry. Complete this town to complete the contract, okay. It says complete this town to complete the contract. Well, which town are they talking about? Well, again, there's that blue arrow that's telling us, as long as I have this active, it's telling me where I need to complete. I think if I were to change, say I change the contract to some other one. If I complete this town, I'm still going to get the reward. It's just, this is just a helper to say, hey, if you want to focus on one thing at a time and you want to work on these contracts as they come up, uh, you can just select them one at a time and they'll try and give you a little bit of hint of where you need to go or where you need to look. And again, there may be some contracts that you can't complete until you unlock some roads or find a path there. So that, at least in my memory, was pretty common in Logistical 2. 
And you don't need to complete these contracts in any order. In fact, you don't need to even look at this if you don't want. You can just start going town to town and, and satisfying them and, and, and doing it. And eventually you'll tick these off kind of automatically. But this is a good way to kind of guide guide your work. And most of the time, I think you're going to be able to do these. Again, there are occasions where a contract's going to come up and you're not immediately going to be able to go after it until you clear the clear a path to that area. And it won't tell you that. You'll just have to kind of discover that as you go. All right, let's see. Ducos. Let's click on that guy and see what he needs. Okay, he needs the sugar cane. And this guy's got a population here, 17,000. So it's going to be consuming sugar cane as we deliver it. We need to do 11.31 tons, or at least, I think, I think this is saying at least 10.17. All right. And then this site, if we provide it fertilizer, is going to give us oranges. So let's go ahead and deliver that sugar cane. And if we look, let's see where it is. Here it is, House of Cane. And if I didn't know, say I had a bunch of towns and I wasn't sure which town actually had the sugar cane, all I got to do is click and drag and it's going to show me right where that's at. And there may be multiple farms. So as we expand the map, there may be multiple farms that, uh, that produce sugar cane. And if I'm not mistaken, we can create farms. We can create uh, industry within certain towns. And we'll see that later on. I think we'll see that later on in the game. I know you can do that in logistical too. And I believe we'll probably be able to do that here. So let's look at the sugar cane real quick. Now, We've got 9.6 tons available of sugarcane in this inventory, right? And there's not enough. There's not enough to satisfy what this guy needs. So let's just go do it and see what happens. I'm not sure what's going to happen. So he's picking up the sugarcane from here, and he's going and delivering it. Oops, let me click on the right one here and do ghosts. So you can see it's being delivered. And now you see here how much we needed is going up and see how it's increasing. 8.4, 8.41. So this town, this population is consuming the resource as we're delivering it. As soon as there's an inventory at all in here, they're consuming it. And I believe they consume it faster for the first half if it's in this red area. So once we cross the halfway point, I think that consumption rate is going to slow down. I could be mistaken, but let's just see what we what we what happens. All right, so we're delivering more. We're seeing how much is needed is going up to five. And now with this load, we should cross this halfway point, and hopefully, now it's in green, and now you can see how much they need. It's slowed down quite a bit, right? They're still consuming. You can see how much they need is increasing. But it's slowed down considerably. So once we get past the halfway point, their consumption rate slows. So this guy's going to keep bringing sugarcane. And eventually we're going to run out. And this is a good part of the tutorial or one aspect of the gameplay you need to keep in mind. Okay, here it goes. It just popped up. Industry is out of stock. Either click skip to force the truck to transport what it has loaded or deliver more input cargo to get the industry to produce some input. So T, what's this talking about skip and T? So the clicking skip, if we look at the vehicle here, it's showing us that it's stopped. I think that's what this means. We'll have to see. Not positive. But we've got an option to skip. So let's read what this says. No available cargo. There's no available cargo in the industry's output left. Press skip in the dot, dot, dot menu of the truck in the truck dash or T to send the half full truck now or wait for more input to create more output. Okay. So a few things. Let's go back to, so if we look at this, let's just see. So these guys are still consuming, and you can see the need is going up as we have to wait. So they're consuming it, but now at our sugarcane place, we're out. Or whoops, that's it. I didn't quite get it clicked there. We're out of stock, and you'll notice. You may have noticed that this little white overlay has uh, 
shrunk down quite a bit because we've been using the product. So in order to produce more, we need to get fertilizer. If we had another truck, maybe we'll do that. Why don't we do that just to illustrate how this is going to work? So if I get another truck, let's go to our depot here. Looks like the car. And I'm going to buy, let's buy a new one. Let's splurge and get a new truck. I'm just going to click on this. And then I'm going to click again, I believe, to confirm. So click. Now we've got our second truck down here. It's a red one. I, don't, I think you can change the colors and stuff. We'll worry about that later. Here's my new truck. Now what I want to do with my second truck is I want to go supply fertilizer to this house of cane so they produce sugar cane. So I want to provide this input. And I'm going to go ahead and make sure I click on the truck in my vehicle list here. So that's the one that's selected. And then I'm going to drag fertilizer and see where I can get fertilizer. I don't see anywhere I can get fertilizer. So that may be a town that I just can't complete yet because I haven't discovered a place to get fertilizer. Now I thought, okay, now that just needs worms. This guy needs fertilizer. Okay. And that's providing us clay. That's our depot. So it looks like with this town, Requires all the sugar cane and it keeps climbing up and eventually it's going to consume all that stuff we delivered. In order to supply that, we need to find fertilizer and get it over to our sugar cane place. Let's click on that here if I can get it. There we go. So we got to find fertilizer. We don't have any. So what do we do? Well, we look at a different town and see what we can do. <laughs> As for that one, we can't do anything with right now. Until we go explore the map and find out where we can get fertilizer, we're not going to be able to satisfy that, that town's needs. So let's do some exploring. I'm going to click on, I'm going to click skip here. So if I, if I were to leave this truck here and then eventually we got, um, we got fertilizer and we delivered it with a different truck, this guy would continue to load up and do his job. But if I say skip, he's going to just deliver what else he has, empty the truck bed now, and we will get a little money for delivering that. So we got 45 bucks for doing that. And this town stays open. We didn't fail anything. It's just waiting for us till we can supply the sugar cane. But now this truck is available. It's, it's got an empty truck bed and we're ready to go. And this is showing the last product they delivered. All right. Let's go look at other towns and see what we can complete. This guy needs a resource that we haven't discovered yet, so we can't complete that one. This guy, here's an example of one that's going to need a whole bunch of stuff. So it needs a little bit of oranges. It needs some worms and it needs some sugar cane. It doesn't have a population, so we're not subject to the resource consumption like these towns are. But we still don't have everything we need. We saw earlier this, this uh, road construction down here requires sand, and we don't have that either, so we can't go down that way. So where can we go? We can head up this way. There's a roadworks here, but since there's no icon, I'm guessing it's they're going to want something that we can't produce. So let's just take our truck and drop it off there. And now this is saying, hey, we discovered industry sand mine. So these little pop-ups that say discovered industry, as we explore the map, and we get close to buildings that produce, or close to towns that produce resources that we haven't been exposed to yet. This will pop up and that'll become available to us. So let's see if we can determine where that sand is. If I pick, I'm on the roadworks. If I pick sand, is it going to show me? It's way over here. So there's some sand way over there. Why don't we just do it? We've got nothing better to do. And we'll automatically explore some of the map as we do this. So I'm just going to take that truck and drag it over to where the sand is. And there, in fact, I could have two trucks do this, right? So now if I select the second truck, click on the roadworks, and I pick the sand that it needs, and I have him go, he's going to go make the trip. And this is going to illustrate another thing. So both these guys are assigned to delivering sand. This guy has a long way to go. And you'll notice he's moving a lot slower than this one. Why is that? This one has all those bonuses. Remember we saw all the production bonuses? 
we look here, it's got two times a uh, booster. And our new truck doesn't. So now we just satisfied the roadworks. That road is being cleared. And we've got this guy who says, hey, you told me to deliver some sand. So he's loading up sand. And let's see what he does with it. He's going to bring it over here. And I'm not actually sure what's going to happen here. If it was a town, the town would probably just take the sand and we'd get paid for it. But with the roadworks, I'm not sure what's going to happen. I'm going to take this truck and just move him out of the way. And just see if there's anything to see when he comes here with the sand. Okay, so he's able to unload the sand. We don't get paid for roadworks for delivering products to the roadworks. So you saw like a, we spent $5.71, I think, making that trip for no reason. So what did we learn there? There's a few things that we learned there that's worth, that's worth uh, pointing out. We saw that the truck, even though this one's new, it doesn't have any power boosts, so it moved a lot slower than our old truck that has those boosts attached to it. And he got the boost just by completing different jobs. Then we saw that even though this Roadworks location had all of its sand needs met, this guy still continued on because that's what he was assigned to do. And so he got assigned to deliver sand. He did it, and he's not going to stop doing it until he gets to the destination and then discovers that, they, that it's either satisfied or they don't need it anymore. And at which point, even though that location had all the sand it needed, he still was able to empty his truck and down and get rid of the sand. And that's important too, because we need the trucks to be empty before you can get more resources. All right. So what do we do? We unlocked a little more map and now we can do some more discovery. It looks like this town needs a fertilizer. So we got to find fertilizer. Let's see now with the rest of the map, we've uncovered some just by going and delivering uh, the sand or, or picking up, I should say, picking up sand from this location. Let's see if we can find the fertilizer. So if I just click on fertilizer, okay, there it is. It's way down there and I'm blocked, right? This road is blocked and this road is blocked, but we now have access to sand and it could be that these guys need sand if we're lucky. And we are. So this guy, if I click on this roadworks, he needs sand and he needs three tons of sand, it looks like. So that's easy enough. Let's, uh, let's try our red truck and see if we can't get him some bonuses by doing this. We'll just pick the sand and it's not that far of a trip, but he is slow without his bonuses. And you can see how like that one town here, Ducos, where they're consuming the resource. And as soon as they're still consuming it, right? This, uh, the completion percentage is getting lower and lower. And as soon as it crosses its halfway point, they're really going to consume it fast. But you can see how having a fast truck is important in that scenario. Now, when we're just delivering sand to the road construction place, none of this is being consumed. So we're not going to lose any of it. We just need to supply three and exactly three. And it can take, you know, two seconds or it can take two hours and we're going to deliver the same amount. There's no time pressure to getting that done. So we'll let him deliver the sand. We'll clear out this road. And then again, what we're trying to do all of this journey here is we're exploring the map, which is good. That's part of the game. We want to do that. We have to do that. But the objective that we were really working towards was getting this, uh, which town was it now? It was here. We were trying to get Ducos the sugar cane so we can complete that town. And as it's taking us longer, you can see this efficiency number is going down. And I believe that affects the score. I personally haven't spent too much time thinking about the score when I played the game. I was more focused on completion. But the faster you can complete these towns, you will get more points. All right. So here's our sugar cane. We know we need fertilizer. We just opened up the road here. I'll just click dismiss that. That's just telling us we've completed the road. So now I'm going to zoom out a little. I'm going to go ahead and click on Ducos. And whoops, that's not the one. We need the sugar cane first. So I'm going to click on House of Cane. I'm going to grab fertilizer. And now I'm going to click here. If I do, if I do, 
they're going to take the fertilizer. So if I light it up here, I've got the red truck selected because I want to, I want him to deliver things and eventually get a power boost. So if I let up here, what's going to happen is that red truck is going to make the trip all the way back up. Their first, yeah, all the way up and, or no, he's going to go get fertilizer first. He'll go pick up some fertilizer and then he'll go all the way around this way. And it looks like this, that lower route, the Southern route is a quite a bit shorter, but we're blocked by the roadworks here. So that road is closed, but all it needs is sand. So before I go and deliver fertilizer, I think I'm going to open up this road. That way it'll be a faster journey. So let's go ahead and we'll click on the roadworks. We'll drag sand and first we'll have him open up this road. Oh, look, I had the wrong truck selected. So I had the I had the yellow trucks. If that's yellow, I can't tell the color, but I had that truck uh, selected, but that's all right. He came over and now he's going to deliver the sand and open up that road for us. Requires, looks like it's going to take two trips, one ton each. So yeah, we're getting close to the end of this episode. Uh, it moves a little slow in the beginning, but uh, purposely going extra slow just to show you the, the gameplay and kind of over explain things as best I can early on so that you have a smooth experience when you play. Eventually, eventually, I'll give you a sneak peek of what happens. Eventually, your trucks, you're going to have more trucks, right? So you're going to be controlling more, more, and more things to, to manage. And then also, as you progress, you're going to be able to increase the speed of the entire game. Now, I'll have to look that up. There is a way of doing it, but you don't get to uh, you don't get to increase the speed of the game right out of the gate. You have to kind of earn that privilege. And I'll see if I can figure that out. There's a there's a way of doing it, and it may be a certain keyboard sequence. I'll try and look that up. But eventually you'll be able to speed up the game to like 10 times speed or even faster. And as you're having satisfying these towns that require, you know, tons of resources, uh, you may want to use that to move things along even faster. And eventually you'll, you might have 20 or 30 trucks or more. I, I think, I think um, we'll see as we play. I don't know if we'll get that far. I just want to kind of get you started. But uh, I believe in this version of Logistical 3, you can have many more trucks than you could in Logistical uh, too. I'm not positive on that, but I believe that's the case. And you're going to have plenty to do and plenty to manage, and you'll be able to speed up your trucks. And eventually your trucks can have wear and tear, and they'll get slower as they get more miles on them. Um, but we'll hopefully we'll get to see some of that as well. For now, though, I think this is a good place to stop. We spent some time, and what did we learn? We learned a little more about the road construction, how that works. We learned about... Um, how if you start to supply a town and you don't have enough resource available, then you really lose that work. I mean, you're going to get money for delivering the product, but we never completed this town here because we didn't have the sugar cane. And so one of the things you're going to want to consider as you move forward in the game, before you start supplying a town, you need to look and see, hey, do we have enough resource? Do we have enough resource stored here? To deliver to that town and complete it. If not, what do I do? Well, maybe I can load up the inventory of fertilizer and then wait for this sugar cane to get to its maximum output inventory. And then once that's done, go back and make sure I've got the fertilizer topped off again. So as I'm taking from it, this production building is producing more and more sugar cane. And maybe then I can supply this uh, city. And then as we go on, we can upgrade each of these towns and increase these inventory levels. And then it becomes much easier to manage and make sure you don't come up short on resource. What else did we learn? We learned, we bought our second truck. We saw that the boosts make a difference. Our new red truck, even with less miles, is much, much slower than our first used truck that has the two time power boost over here. And we can see that it's kind of highlighted here too. I think on the dash, this 2X is showing that it's got a boost here. Anyway, well, I hope you enjoyed that and are learning the game and getting a little more comfortable with it. 
Uh, in the next episode, we're going to continue to do more, and we'll see about maybe tackling some of these locations that require more products. And you can see here, here's the one that has a product that we haven't identified yet, so we can't complete this particular town. But we'll get into that in the next episode. For now, this is Glyrcat saying thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you're enjoying learning about this game. It's very different than a lot of games, but once you kind of get into it, uh, you can have a lot of fun. If this type of thing, if you're into completion and ticking off all these towns and the, the map is huge, we're going to find out the map is really, 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 really huge. So you can see as I pan out, we are just on a little speck <laughs> of the map. No offense to people living in Martinique. But uh, this is a very, very big game. And we're going to come up against uh, how to cross these uh, oceans, too. And uh, it's been a while since I've played, so I may have to learn that with you as we do this. But anyway, this is Glider Cat saying thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.